this way. Basically, these just clip in to the rungs of the ladder. And then on this part, we just have these brackets that slide over this main bar. And there's no potential for this to slide off because it's sandwiched between these two. We're doing all of this with our Bouge RV power station. It's a small guy. We're still at 90%. I actually used this on another lift that I did um, a few weeks ago. So this could do tons of these to where you don't have to look for a plug or anything and you can just bring this up on the roof. All right, so we've got our ladder set up here on the roof. So we have a piece of wood that's kind of bracing the, the weight of this. Now, if you get close, what we've done is we're anchoring the bottom of this ladder to this piece of wood. So there's no potential for this to slide out as we um, have weight at the top of the ladder. And then we have this drilled and we're just gonna seal that when we're done. So we'll go ahead and get our ladder train set up there and we're gonna do the same process. It's as easy as that, folks, to get a condenser up on the roof. Uh, this is a two-story building. Um, thankfully, we have that garage to get us a little bit up higher. We could have done it straight from the ground, but it's easier to do it this way. So now that we have this up here, we'll show you the unit that we're replacing. All right, so we've got our power disconnected at our disconnect. Our breaker is actually disconnected or uh, turned off. So we're just gonna disconnect these three wires. This was definitely not up to code. This was rubbing right up against the AC unit. So that's that. So got that disconnected. This whole thing should just come out. I wanted to take a quick second to show you my new bed slide. I just purchased this and I thought maybe it might give you guys some ideas for your setup. So as you see, it slides out halfway. You can access both of these pack outs. And then you have the full slide out to there. So we have access to all of our pack outs with the drawers. And they keep them, it keeps it stationary while we're driving around. So this isn't sliding around. We need to bring this up on the roof. Let's take it off. Good to go. All right, so our thermostat cable is extremely easy. We already have a plastic grommet here to prevent these from rubbing anything. A nice little touch that Rude equipment has. We just got our two wires here. The polarity does not matter for these. Next, we're going to go ahead and hook up our electrical. All right, so we have our electrical connected. We just have one hot going to one side, one to the other. The polarity doesn't matter on those. And then the ground just goes to our ground block. <clears throat> 
and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna connect our side panel first, and then once this is connected, we'll mount our box just to make sure that it clears everything. All right, so before we um, do our Stay Bright 8 on these lines, just wanted to show you something that I'll do to where I have a nice um, insulation all the way up to the service port here. I'll pull this all the way back about eight inches or so and just barely cl uh, clamp this on. You don't have to put much pressure at all and it'll hold it in place. So you're not gonna be melting this while you're brazing. All right, so here is our evaporator coil. It's kind of an interesting setup, but we have plenty of room to fit our new rood. So we're just gonna get our PVC disconnected. All that's gonna get replaced or reattached later. And we'll go ahead and start by cutting our line right here. And we're gonna try and minimize how many couplers there are here. All right, so now that uh, he's working on that down there, we have the lines disconnected downstairs. We're gonna do a flush on these lines. It had a, probably what I would consider a mild burnout. So the lines weren't completely black, but there was a little bit, especially close to the compressor here on the suction line. And so what we have is our nitrogen and we have this uh, cone fitting. Now Hillmore makes a kit where you load a gun and you slide this in and shoot it through. But what you can do is you can get these foam pigs on True Tech tools. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna wedge it in here till it's in the pipe. And then we're just gonna use this cone with our nitrogen, blow it through, and this seal will get any contaminants out of this line. As you can see, there's a little bit of dark stuff in here. And I don't care for it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze this. We're gonna ream this first so that this isn't catching on this lip. Slide it in and then we'll blow it through. All right. <clears throat> All right, so the foam pig is in there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but I used the butt end of this to get it far enough in. Now we're just gonna hold our cone to where it's sealed on this pipe, turn our nitrogen on and let it rip. Hopefully you can see that okay. We just did one uh, pass with our foam pig and it is super clean. So we're gonna send another one of these through. I'm just gonna feed it in like this, kind of twist it as you go. Okay, so we're just gonna feed this in just a little bit. And give it some nitrogen. easy as that I could hear it come out the other end and again super clean on the inside and we'll go ahead and do the same on our 3 8 line all right so we got everything fitted up here everything looks nice we got our filter dryer now that's one disadvantage to the ream rood and a lot of other companies Goodman actually has the filter dryer built in so if you ever need to remove it it's a hassle but in terms of installation, it's really nice having that pre-installed. But what we're gonna be using is Stay Bright 8 and Stay Clean by Harris. This comes as a combo. If you'd like to uh, purchase this, you can find it in the link in the video description. All of my favorite tools can be found there, including this product. Now, being as we're up here on the roof, got some rain coming in. I don't wanna be hassling with bringing oxygen and acetylene up here. So this is fantastic. We just have this very minimal equipment to bring up here and we don't have to have a nitrogen flow because it does not create enough heat with this product to create that soot in the lines. So that's another advantage of using Stay Bright 8. So I'll try and prop you guys up here so you can see what I'm doing and the technique of how to do this. Um, this is so low heat that we don't even need to wrap these or wrap this. Nothing is going to get damaged. This only gets up to about 400 degrees. Okay, so with all of these, we have everything cleaned. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit this with the Scotch-Brite one more time. 
But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and apply our flux. So we're just gonna put a decent amount here on the male end only. I don't like to put it on the female end. And then once you stuff it in here, you'll get this excess. I like to just wipe that off. And then we'll do this for these other three joints and then we'll actually do the soldering. And a couple of things here, you wanna keep a bend like this on your uh, silver solder and then you wanna heat up the opposite side of where you're feeding the wire in. like that. So I'm going to give that a second to cool off and then I'm going to undo this so that I'm not super close on this uh, line here and then we'll go ahead and get the next two done. So you will end up with a little bit of black oxidization on the solder itself. That's not a hole. Um, that's all that is is the oxidization there. But as you can see we have good coverage all the way around. That's some oxidization there as well. All right, so now that this is dry, you always wanna make sure and wipe everything down. If there's any excess flux, you wanna get that off. So go ahead and loosen this. There right, we go. Beautiful. So next, we're just gonna do these two. All right, so our flux is already on here. I'm gonna do our best to aim this away from the insulation. have it folks I'm just gonna wait for that to dry up wipe it down and then we will be ready once we get the inside connected to do our pressure test now one thing to note with this is hopefully you can see that arrow the arrow needs to be pointing away from the compressor this is the discharge line so refrigerant is flowing this way and getting sucked back in through the suction side or if you're installing this at the evaporator coil, you want this arrow pointed towards the evaporator coil. Well, we got this coil out. Look at you go, Terry. Man, he's fast. All right, so we got this flattened out here. We're gonna do a bead of caulk on the bottom side of this coil. We're gonna set it right on, and then we're gonna build our transition and make our connections. So these roots have a built-in TXV, so we don't have to worry about any of the connections. We simply make our joints here, and then we're gonna mount this bulb on the suction line where it comes out here. All right, so our bottom is sealed. The top is all pookied up. This was a really small transition, so we taped and pookied on the inside and we did mastic tape, so nothing's gonna be leaking there. So we're gonna go ahead and take our cover, put it on, and then we'll go ahead and get this sprayed up. These are what uh, keeps the nitrogen in here. So as soon as we take these off, we should hear some nitrogen come out. There we go. We've got everything fitted here. We're gonna go ahead and put our flux on. 
everything has a nice tight seal. We're just going to do this on the nail end. Just like that. Everything is nice and tight. Just go ahead and wipe that on your pants. So our lines are soldered in. We're going to do our pressure test now. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these two covers. And we're gonna put our Schrader core removal tool on the low side. These are very easy to use. You can find these on our Amazon store. Um, before we connect it, we're just gonna go ahead and remove the Schrader core. And one thing with these Apion ones that I didn't know for a long time is this is actually not how far it goes in you have to push on it and you'll feel that little click and that means that the Schrader core is locked into place so once you feel that click this will stay attached to the tool and then you can just stick it to the top of the unit okay so we're gonna thread this on we're basically just removing that restriction there and then we're gonna take our blue hose off of our manifold and attach it right there and we're going to go ahead and feed in about 300 psi of nitrogen we're just going to take the yellow side attach it to our regulator for our nitrogen make sure both of these are closed turn that on we're going to open up our nitrogen and we're going to go ahead and throttle in through the low side. We're going to go up to 300 PSI. What I like to do before though is put in about 50 to 75 PSI. Let it sit for about a couple minutes. Just make sure it's not dropping rapidly. As you can see, we're not dropping at all. Then I'll proceed with going up to 300. In the past, I've put in about 300 and then found out that there's a pretty good sized leak and wasted all of that nitrogen. I think 250 will probably be fine for this. So we're going to let that kind of settle. It'll drop for a, a few seconds and once it settles, um, this tool has a pretty nice feature of a test tightness. So what we can do is once this starts to just stabilize, it looks like it's about stopped moving, we can do a tightness test. And what this will do is it'll just count how many point, not PSI, but uh, how many decimals it'll drop within a certain time frame. So when we hit tightness test here, let's go ahead and do that. Just press and hold the tightness test, press enter to start and then this little readout will give you how many times it's been holding that pressure test and right here will pop up uh, how many pressure how much pressure has dropped since you put that pressure in we're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and check it so we're gonna be using our true blue kit with our CPS micrometer this is a major upgrade from using a manifold set. As you just saw, we put on our uh, Schrader core removal tool. So we have zero restrictions going into that line. 
and this is a one hose setup so we're going straight from the unit to the vacuum pump nothing else so we're going to go ahead and start by putting our half inch line on here just make sure this is good and snug all of our clamps are tight and since we're letting our pressure test uh, time we're gonna just set this here but once we're done with our pressure test this one will go right there so on our micron gauge what we're gonna do with this once we're done with our pressure test we're going to attach it right here to the high side and this is perfect because it's the farthest point away from the vacuum pump so it gives you a perfect reading and then you can isolate by turning this uh, knob off at the vacuum pump and isolate and do your decay test. All right, so as you can see, it's been 13 minutes. Um, usually I would let this stabilize um, for a lot longer, maybe about 30 minutes before doing the test, but it's only dropped 0.8 PSI. And I started this test pretty soon after putting that nitrogen in. So we are totally fine with um, this pressure differential, 0.8 PSI. On a manifold that has analog gauges, that probably wouldn't even be, you wouldn't even be able to register it with the naked eye. So this gives you a lot more accuracy. So with that being said, our, we're gonna go ahead and take our hoses off. Uh, we'll just crack these and let all the pressure out. Make sure that this is turned off. And once our pressure is out, we'll go ahead and start our vacuum. All right, so our nitrogen has all been let out of the system. We're gonna take our blue hose off and we're gonna hook our big true blue uh, half inch hose up to our Schrader core tool. Put our micron gauge on this side, get that turned on, and we'll get our pump started. This pump is a slow start, it's very efficient, and I can pump down a system in 10 minutes down to 150 microns. As you can see, it is 2.30, we're just getting this started, so by 240 we should be down to close to 150 microns we're at two minutes or we're at 232 so it's been two minutes and we're down to 3,000 and dropping we're at three minutes and we're down to 400 microns. All right guys, it's 247. I forgot to come up here a little bit sooner. So it's been about 17 minutes. We're down to 190. I'm totally okay with that. As long as we don't rise over 500 after we isolate, then we should be good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close this off and we're just gonna keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't rise. All right, so we're holding steady at 190. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is take off these covers. And we're just gonna use this tool here to open this up all the way on both sides. And then we'll be ready to put our Schrader core back in and we'll be ready to fire up the system. So we're gonna start with the suction side. Let all of our pressure in. And for those of you that don't know, these systems come pre-charged with the specified amount of refrigerant. This one comes with 54 ounces of 410A. And for all of you who are wondering, these micron gauges are totally fine to see positive pressure. You can clean them from time to time, but it's not gonna hurt your micron gauge. At least the CPS and the field piece ones. Okay, so those are fully opened. We're just gonna throw these back on, just snug them, 
You don't have to get them too tight. And let's go ahead and put our Schrader core back in. So this process is very easy. As you can see, we have this clipped in. What we're gonna do is we're gonna feed this in and then we're gonna take this, slide it down, tighten it, open it up and you noticed it pushed this end out. So now there's pressure. So it's a lot easier to do this with two hands. You hold it in with one hand and just start threading it in and you will feel it once it seats. Right there. And that's it. So now you can go ahead and take this off. And a little bit of pressure will come out and that's it. Love this little tool. So we're gonna go ahead and take this guy off. It's gonna let out a little bit here. side on here and a low side on this one so since we have our gauges hooked up and this is longer than 15 feet we're gonna have to add a little bit of refrigerant so we're gonna go ahead and burp these two lines so we're just gonna crack it just let out whatever is in the hose you don't have to let out too much. There's some liquid there. And then once we hook up our tank, our tank of 410 to this, we'll go ahead and purge this line as well. Okay, so the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this bulb. And Ream slash Rude makes it really easy to do that. So basically just comes with this uh, perfect length bolt. So you want this bulb to be either 10 o'clock or two o'clock. So we're gonna leave it there in the two o'clock position. And we're just gonna put our drill on a low setting here. We just want this butted up against to the pipe. You don't have to get it super tight. Just like that, maybe just a little bit more just to where it doesn't move. Now, another thing that um, a lot of people don't know is that you need to have this access to air to this temperature in here. That's a little uh, temperature probe. So we're gonna wrap this with the insulation that it came with because we don't want this bulb to be exposed to any other temperature except for this pipe. It also comes with two zip ties so that you can make sure if the adhesive ever comes off of this, we'll be all right. Just like that. So we have that exposed there and we can just throw some tape on here to keep this seal all sealed up nice. So that's good to go. The last thing we need to do is put on our flu and we'll be ready to fire this baby up. All right, so here's our finished product. We've got the TXV installed. This is definitely closer than I'd like, um, but I think we should be okay there. Um, so everything is installed. We're just waiting for the time delay to turn off and then we'll go upstairs and check our pressures, make sure everything comes on like it should, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we got our tank here. We're gonna go ahead and take our yellow hose it up right here okay so we're gonna open this up right here go ahead and purge it that's it now we flip it we'll go ahead and put our disconnect in and hopefully uh, the furnace is on by now and everything will kick on there we go so we're gonna give this about 10 minutes, let the pressure stabilize, 
and we're going to go ahead and throw our clamps on so we can check our superheat and subcooling. The high side is going to go to this one here. The low side will go to the left side. All right, so on our gauges, we can see our superheat and subcooling. We need to get to about 11 degrees of subcooling. So since we have a TXV, we're a little bit low, indicating that we're low on refrigerant. So we'll give this a few minutes, see where it stabilizes at, and we'll try and get that up to 11 degrees. All right, so it's been about 10 minutes. We're gonna start throttling in this a very small amount of refrigerant through the low side. And we're gonna just kind of monitor this and see if we can get that up to around 11 degrees. Uh, just so you know, it's 73 degrees inside, about the same outside, and our target is um, 65 degrees is what the thermostat is set to. There we have it folks, we're at 11 degrees of subcooling. We're just hovering around that uh, temperature, it fluctuates a little bit, but this system is working perfectly. It's pulling a lot of heat and we'll show you the temperature at the vents in just a second. Now what we're gonna do here is, in order to minimize how much refrigerant stays in these hoses, what we're going to do first of all, make sure these are closed. We're gonna disconnect our high side put it back on its little holder here. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and open both of these up slowly. And we'll notice these pressures going down and those pressures going up. They will both equalize at the same pressure. So 131. So that just transferred all of the pressure from this hose to the low side. And now we can go ahead and disconnect our low side. And that way we don't have a bunch of refrigerant stuck in our hoses and we can keep it inside the unit. Really nice install. This little top piece rattles a little bit, but it's on the roof, so ain't no big deal. Everything is insulated, pulling tons of heat out of this guy. So we'll show you downstairs what the temperature is. All right, so as you can see, we've got 72 degree return air. 62, 52 would be 20 degrees. And we are approaching 54 degrees right now. I checked on the vents too. Seems great. Yeah. Nice, nice cold air. <laughs> well guys, we have another installation in the books. I thought this was a really easy job and I was really pleased with Rude's equipment. Uh, Rude and Ream are basically the same type of system. You can definitely tell the um, higher grade material over a Goodman system. I still really like Goodman and I think it's a great product for a DIYer and someone who's looking to get their AC on a budget. But Ream and Rood really has their equipment dialed in. They have the built-in TXV and I'm really excited to start installing more of those systems. Well folks, I hope you learned something from this video in terms of replacing your HVAC system. Whether you are a DIYer, a technician who is learning, or even a seasoned tech, sometimes these videos are fun to watch and entertaining to see how others uh, do certain things. Now, if you'd like to see some more full HVAC system replacements, check out this playlist right here, and I'm sure you'll find what you're looking for. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.